Hello folks, I'm back again and today I'm going to organize Robinson Crusoe. I've yet to play it, but I did paint everything <laughs> that goes in this box. So we're going to talk a little bit about painting this set and what I thought about this these models. And also we're going to put everything back in the box and try to organize it the best I can with only watching a whole lot of playthroughs and kind of reading through the instructions. Let's check it out. All right, so here on the table I've got everything kind of spread out. Uh, uh, these are all the, the items that are going to go in the box. I've got my miniatures here ready to show you, so we're going to take a look at those in just a second. I've got all my wooden pieces, uh, my, some, some cardboard chits. Uh, these are ones I haven't sorted out. Uh, the, the other things, the little quick pull resources and stuff that, that go in this tray that was kind of built in. I, I've semi-organized that a little bit. I've got my little uh, periscopes and then the various cards. All laid out here. So this game came with a pretty decent insert and uh, we're gonna be utilizing that to see how it works. I, uh, <laughs> If you've seen it in my other videos like I took the pest insert and I cut away and I cut away and I cut away <laughs> until basically there was nothing left and that's what it took to accomplish uh, holding a game with sleeved cards. Uh, so this game has a lot of expansions. I think because of that They've made this insert quite sizable, so there's quite a bit more room, at least with just the cards in there before they were sleeved. There's, there was quite a bit of room in there left over, so uh, my feeling is it's probably made to hold a bunch of expansions and stuff. We're going to put a little, some of that to the test. I have sleeved all of these cards, so, uh, well, I actually ran out of sleeves, so for these small ones, uh, I did these Mayday card card sleeves and uh, had this size for the bigger uh, card sleeves. They do they do fit for the most part, but there's a little bit, it's just a little bit too long here at the end, which might not bother too many people, but uh, just so you know. Uh, and that is just some sleeves that I had on hand, so <laughs> I decided to utilize them. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the miniatures. They're really fun to paint. We're going to go ahead and start the turnstile, which I hope is not too noisy. Uh, I painted these with contrast paints. I, I would really like to go back in here. I think I might go back in here and finish these out maybe a little bit more. There's a little bit more work I can do, but I wanted to get them just kind of uh, basically painted up to play that first game. And uh, you don't have to wait to do that. They came... They came with like the wooden versions of these tokens, which are also very nice. But the uh, but the miniatures are really well made. Uh, these are Awakened Realms miniatures, and uh, they have a product called Sundrop. And you probably heard me talk about this before. But anytime you see someone offering that, you know that the miniature is going to come with a lot of deep recesses and stuff. Now these weren't as egregious as some of them were. Like when I was play, painting Lords of Ragnarok and stuff like that, the, the, uh, uh, some of them seemed a little bit strange. And, and even with a lot of the nemesis aliens and stuff, the, the strange huge crevices and stuff look kind of odd. These were all basically really, really nice miniatures, very pleasant to paint, very normal looking. Uh, they are sort of a 30 millimeter scale. Uh, I wasn't too particular with the bottom of it either. Like I said, these kind of these really could use like another another go around. Uh, they look, I think that they look pretty good, but I almost wouldn't mind uh, taking another shot at these. And I'm going to go ahead and switch it out for the rest of the miniatures that come in here. All right, now I've swapped it out for some of the other miniatures that come in there. There's also like some tokens, like they've got this uh, this compass looking token. And I'm not sure what this is. It looks like a barrel or something. And then, of course, we've got Friday and uh, some of the other people that you can be in this game. So, so the way it works in this game is uh, basically you you pick an occupation <laughs> and you're one of those people. Uh, these animals here are optional companions that you can include. You've got the monkey. He That monkey was actually uh, a few bucks extra. <laughs> If you can believe that. And then we've got the dog and the cat and the bird. I'm not sure what this basket or this lantern are meant for, but they're uh, they're also 
included in there. There's a, there's a few of those. You've got Friday, you've got the Carpenters. So the way this works is uh, they've got a male and a female of each of the different occupations. And there's two that are identical. So uh, it was kind of interesting miniature wise, you're gonna end up with painting two of every miniature. And, and the way it works in this game is basically you're gonna send someone out to do an action and it kind of represents an amount of time that particular player has. And the carpenter will have other some skills that help them maybe to build things, uh, I, I assume. And the soldier might be better at killing animals. And then the, the adventurer might be good at discovering new places. You know, so they it's a little asymmetrical uh, with the powers. Uh, but you get two of each character. And I guess you choose if you want the, the male or the female. Or maybe you're both of those things. Who knows? These were all originally represented with these uh, these little tokens, which are uh, just little wooden tokens with stickers and stuff on them. Uh, and you get two of each kind, and you just put them out. You just put them out onto the board as you uh, as you go to do different adventures. I painted these with contrast paints. Uh, I mixed in with some regular acrylic paints and some uh, different. Uh, washes and nolan oil and all all the little tricks that I have on my uh, on my paint table I painted all of this in about a week and uh, It was pretty easy to do. There's a lot of detail in some of these and uh, it made it a little bit tricky uh, And I I had to make some kind of choices like I decided that the sand uh, everything that represented sand was gonna be that brown color uh, and that's what's on the base of most of these some of these had a pure wooden base, so they ended up, you know, like I believe the chefs, like the chefs here, seem to be standing on wood. So uh, the, the, their base is a little bit different color than the others. Then they had some miniatures where there's sort of a threshold. I was impressed that all the bases uh, have detail on them. So it's not something where you're going to have to add a lot of detail to the base, to kind of give it that little extra punch of realism. Uh, all of these have, you know, different degrees of decorations, but most of them are pretty interesting. They got some rope on the ground over here. I think the soldier, then the soldier here with the little stone uh, skull or whatever that is, the bottom of their base is pretty neat. The chef's got like a fish and, so, and a little basket of eggs and stuff there. So it's, there's a lot of cool uh, details that were put into these, a lot of love put into these miniatures, and I like them. I'm not super sure yet how practical it is. In fact, I bet there's a lot of people that will be like, ah, I'd never play with that with miniatures. It's so much easier with just these tokens and stuff. But um, I don't know. If you're one of those, then you won't care about that. And Maybe you didn't buy this. <laughs> but if you do like painting miniatures, these are a fun, this is a fun little set to paint. Oh, but there's one more thing, the fort. So in this game, you're gonna build a, build a shelter. And I, I'm not sure if you start off with like, like this, because it has these little things, like, let, let me put this here. So you got this little thing here. And uh, then there's another little piece that you can add on to the side. Like that. So now you got a little fire and stuff. And there's another piece that you can add on that goes to the top of here. Easily fits, very intuitively easily fits on top of here. Okay, there we go. So we got that. Let's make this a little taller. Then you've got some other little shelters. I'm not entirely sure what all these are for. If, uh, if they go together a certain way, but there's a, there's a bunch of other little pieces to this. So this might represent adding different components to your fort. And then you got this, the base here, which I believe is called a palisade. I believe this is the palisades and this will represent you building them up. Uh, this also comes in little sections that fit together. And the finished one is quite impressive. You've got a nice, oops, you got a nice little fort there. 
that you build up throughout the course of the game. All right, and we'll back this up and spin it around so you can take a closer look at it. So this was pretty fun to paint. Uh, I, I considered magnetizing it. You can see I haven't pressed it down very much right here. Uh, this will kind of snap in pretty tight, but I had problems getting it loose. I, I've pulled it apart. I put it together and pulled it apart several times to kind of uh, to, to kind of get it loosened up and make sure that it doesn't cause me a problem later. But uh, it is a really interesting element. Uh, I believe that this is represented just on a little track, and I'm not entirely sure how practical this will be to pull out. But it was something that was sort of prominently featured during the the Game Found campaign. So. Uh, I wanted to make sure to paint it up and show you what it looks like or what it could potentially look like if you painted it up and put it together. Uh, and it does look neat. It is a neat way to kind of represent what it is. Um, and like I said, I'm not sure how practical it will be. I'm going to have to play that first game. Uh, I kind of wanted to get all of this done before I ever started playing a game. <laughs> because if I played this game and I found it frustrating or something like that, I probably wouldn't. Uh, finish this little painting project and there just wasn't that much in here uh, to paint not to go ahead and just knock it out. I mean it seems like a lot of miniatures but this is a really pretty light light load for, uh, for a, a game with miniatures in it so uh, I wanted to make sure and paint them up the best I could. Yeah looking at it close up I'm seeing all kinds of things I'd like to go back and touch. I kind of like to hit these ropes again and kind of make them stand out a little bit more. I had trouble with some of the colors I picked looked really uh, similar to the bamboo colors that I picked. I tried to use different washes to differentiate some of the colors and stuff. Maybe add some of the same colors but add different washes to them to make them look like the, there maybe uh, could be different materials but I, that didn't work out quite as well as I want. And the fires are looking a little dim too. I'd kind of like to brighten those up and, and make them a little bit more uh, vibrant. I wasn't sure what some of these materials were made of like this. I just made it sort of like dark wood, like hardened dark wood. I basically had two different kinds of wood here. We got bamboo and then we got this kind of dark hardwood. And then we've got some stonework around the bottom of it, which is kind of fun. All right, so that's all the miniatures. That's all the painted miniatures and stuff. Uh, those are going in their insert. Their insert is actually pretty nice. And uh, it's uh, it's fairly intuitive where where the people go. You can you can sort of see where they fit. They do push fit into these uh, into here, so it's going to wear on your bases. The, the, they've got it. It's not it's not bad. Like it's not terrible, but it's uh, they do kind of slide into there. And I think that that might wear the paint of your bases. That's why I haven't like I haven't uh, been too particular about how my bases are right now because I wanted to see kind of judge that level of wear. I also haven't coated these at all. So these don't have any sort of um, UV protectant or anything to kind of help keep uh, little fingerprints from rubbing the paint off or anything like that. I, I do do that occasionally. I have been, I'm usually pretty lazy about it, especially with the board game miniatures that are going to sit in this box mostly. Um, they are not going to be going to be brought out all that often. It's interesting that uh, there's no guide for where things go in here, but you can just if you've spent enough time with the miniatures, you can uh, you can just kind of look at the silhouette and you can tell which <laughs> which things go go where. And for the most part, the male female versions of these miniatures are are just kind of placed alongside each other. So. If you figure out where one of them goes, you can see where the other one more than likely goes. All right, with the miniatures all packed away, we can go ahead and slide the protective cover over the top. They are safe. They're not going anywhere. I do appreciate that they've included this. Uh, if you're not going to paint these up, you can remove all of this from the tray, put it in a bags or something like that, and save yourself room inside of your insert. Especially if you got 
some of the other things that maybe would make it too bulky, like that Book of Adventures. I didn't get the Book of Adventures yet, so I, I don't know if I will. But, <laughs> but if I had gotten that and I wasn't going to paint these, I would definitely consider pulling, all, pulling this thing out and just uh, swap. These miniatures are plenty sturdy enough to survive inside of a bag if they're unpainted. So feel free to pull these out and put them in a plastic bag or something. Of course, if you don't have the Book of Adventures, it might be a good idea to leave this in just to take up space. So there's not a lot of free space for things to move around inside. All right, so let's start putting this all together back in the box. So, uh, We've got all our general components over here. We've got some paper components. Uh, we've got all sorts of cars to organize over here. This this thing did come with these, which are like little separator uh, cards. They have a logo down here that matches uh, the logos on there. So you'll be able to take your cards and use these to separate them and make it kind of easy to flip through and figure out what you need. It did come with this deck of cards. This deck of cards is actually numbered and they're in order. So this is made to teach you the game and because of that, I haven't sleeved them or pulled them out. Now, once you do this, these will be incorporated into these other cards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave them contained like this until I do this tutorial scenario. I'm gonna set them in there. Uh, and I've also got sleeves for it for when that's done. So I'm just gonna put these things in the box and that'll give me some idea of the extra space that I'm going to need uh, to store all these. And it'll also give us a better idea of uh, what else we'll be able to incorporate in terms of expansions and other content. So inside of this tray, this is the tray that came with the game. So for this thing, uh, I was able to get almost every token. I mean, we've got the first player token and we've got these, um, I think these are called discovery tokens. Uh, those are separate. They're kind of big. I don't think they were meant to be in here. They're going to be in a pile. Uh, you're going to be shuffling those up and putting them into a pile anyway. But here we've got uh, all the little wooden pieces, uh, all the various different types of tokens, and all these resources. These are the, the fancy plastic resources. Uh, I do have the wooden versions. These wooden versions oddly take about the same amount of room as these. Uh, but because I don't really have them, because I paid the extra for all this stuff, I decided just to leave this in the bag and that'll just get tossed into the box. But this bin was plenty big enough to hold all the different tokens aside from, uh, like I said, these discovery tokens and the first player token and uh, whatever this big tile is. Oh, I think this, this big tile was something... Uh, <laughs> this tile was something that they gave you um, they gave you as I'm sorry for being like a year late or something <laughs> and I've left it aside so I can look up the rules for it because it had like a little barcode with the rules so I want to make sure I know what it, what that thing means before I go incorporating it fully but there's uh, this little set I bought these I didn't realize I didn't realize just how jank these are. So what th what these do is basically you can break them. Is If you get into a bad spot, if you get stuck, you can take one of these and break it apart and uh, and redo something. So it's it's kind of a, it's an odd disposable little game component uh, that was three pounds. Okay, <laughs> so, but that will fit in the box and that'll go in there. Uh, a lot of these tokens, like these are all the character tokens and there's the animal tokens. And a couple of other little miscellaneous tokens here. There's a big crab and some sort of, um, it looks like a potted plant. Uh, these I've just kind of left into the bag. Uh, these I won't be using at all. Uh, so they wouldn't have to go in here. So this, uh, you could con consider taking these out if you want to, if you're like that. Uh, <laughs> I keep everything. I'm kind of a hoarder, so I'm going to keep everything. But this would leave if I needed the room for an expansion. So don't consider this when thinking about how much room is left over, I guess. Then there's these paper elements. These will probably be included last. We've got a dice tower. We've got all the terrain tiles that you're going to discover. The game board itself and the various rule books, both the 
starting adventure book and the regular rule book. All of that goes into this box. Let's make some room for it. Oh, and we've got the dice. There's a, there's a couple of different kinds of dice that we'll have to incorporate also. Let's make some room here. I have one sticker left over from when I uh, put all of this stuff together initially. I wasn't sure what this goes on. I was thinking it goes on that little yellow thing, but it didn't fit quite right because that's a circle and that yellow thing sort of shaped like a potted plant. So I wasn't sure what to make of that. I don't know if there's a particular order that makes the most sense for these. So I'm just going to start with what's here. We've got the hammer. And I think I'll start, I'm going to start in the back over here. So this one with a hammer, we've got some, uh, we see that symbol again right here. And these discovery cards, we're going to put those right here. And slide that up. All right. We've got plenty of room for this next one, which I uh, can't tell what that is exactly, but it matches these gray cards. It's going to fit that in. All right, we got a bit more room. I wonder if we could fit in uh, this last one of the question mark cards, which matches these. There's quite a few of these, so I don't know if that's going to work or not. Oh, uh, yeah, that works just fine. And boom. All right, so all of those cards fit into there just fine. Uh, we got another kind of big section here, and this is probably the single largest set of cards. I believe these are those discovery cards that you draw every day. You have like a, you make a decision in the daytime and it comes back to bite you later on, sort of like Frostpunk. All right, so, uh, so we've got this icon here. Oh, and I noticed there's another one with a book. Hmm. And I'm not sure what that is. That might be uh, that might be for something else, maybe the book of adventures or something else. So I'm going to set that aside. I do have just this though, so let's go and do that. All right, so that can go like so. And I noticed that there's plenty of room to go flush with these little card things. Sometimes, sometimes with the way they make this, it doesn't quite work. That's going to have plenty of room. Uh, let's go ahead and we've got another one here that's got uh, the treasure box stuff. And I think there's plenty of room for that to fit. Of course, that's going to go with these things. So we'll go ahead and work those in. I'll put their placeholder card. The other cards we have of this size are uh, what looks like companions. Uh, Friday, the animals, and all the companion cards and stuff. Uh, this Friday has two sides on it. I'm not sure about that one yet. I'm going to go ahead and put them under this plus. <laughs> not knowing what else they might be. But I'm going to go ahead and put them there. And then this other one I'm just going to stick, uh, I'm just going to stick in the front. Uh, I don't see any cards that go with that, so I'll have to figure. If you know in the comments what what that little symbol means or this little this little pair of symbols means, let me know. Oh, so wait, we also have these cards. These are the wreckage cards. I think there's supposed to be one more of these. Maybe there's just two. Okay, so we've got a couple of these wreckage cards, which are things we'll scavenge uh, to start the game. And these cards, oh, I don't remember what these are called. But this might be, this might be uh, this thing. So we're going to put them under under this right here. That might be what this, this represents. And uh, it's such a small amount of cards, we'll just put them like that. All right. But what we have left are these sleeves, which is the perfect amount of sleeves for this, and these cards, which I can't, uh, I can't move from different orders, so we're gonna put them like so. So 
if I had these cards incorporated into everything and they were sleeved, uh, we would go to about here. So you've got another little section, like a whole section and about a half to add more stuff if you've got expansion cards and stuff like that. And we haven't even gotten into all these other things. Okay, so now we have these small cards. Uh, what I would recommend is probably taking a non-elastic rubber band and separating these uh, separating these by type so maybe when you pull them out you can kind of pull them up like that I don't have any of those rubber bands yet I've got some more in order so I'm just gonna slide mine in and they do I, this is my first time testing with the sleeves I was a little nervous that they wouldn't work there's still plenty of room it's got a little finger finger loop here on the end so you can kind of reach in here and, and pluck them out without too much trouble uh, they seem to fit just fine with the sleeves which is a relief and of course these still need some sleeves but i can see that there's going to be way way plenty plenty of room to hold those i'm actually going to put these in here to remind myself which sleeves i used on those all right so now we've got another little cubby space right here underneath and uh, we want to find something that we can stash under there. Uh, it might be a good place for these <laughs> these things we're never really going to use. We could kind of shove those in there. Those actually fill up that space uh, kind of perfectly. And if you didn't need them, you could probably put your dice in there. Let's see the dice fit in there too. Yeah, it looks like uh, you could almost fit your dice in there. If they stick out a little bit, they don't fit as perfectly as these did. So I'm just going to stick this in like here. Then your little adventure tiles just get put in on top of that. Your exploration tiles get put in. Then we've got these big tokens. Of course, this big square thing wouldn't normally be there. That's not really, <laughs> this is just something I haven't dealt with yet, but that's going to fit in uh, just fine right here. And we'll go ahead and throw the dice in on top of that. Uh, we've got all these other little tokens. Wow, there's a lot of room in the top of this. I'm almost thinking I might just put my dice in here just to take up space so those cards don't bounce around inside of there. So I, I'm going to do this for now. Uh, I think even if I did sleeve them, I could probably keep my cart, my dice like that. These things I'm not really going to use. I'll make sure all the air is out of the bag so it takes up as little room as possible. Those are just going to get shoved into here. Uh, these things, of course, that only going to fit in one spot. Comes with this dice tower that easily fits in here. In fact, I might do these up on the side. Yep, and now the dice tower fits in there nice and flat. Uh, we've got these other little tokens, which can just kind of go like so. Now we've got a whole lot of extra room. So all of this from here to here and all of this is empty. So uh, there's probably a lot of other expansions for, for this game. Uh, that there's plenty of room for them. Uh, they've obviously thought about that as they incorporated uh, this box. So, so let's go ahead and put this into the big box. So we've got our bottom here. Let's see what direction it's going, okay. It's a little poofy on the sides, but you can put those in. Uh, this lid to this box will hold these double-sided boards like so. And uh, also these things seem to fit right here. We've got another whole space right here with nothing to put in it. I don't know what's supposed to go in there. A lot of room in this too. It looks like there's probably more of these someplace you can acquire. Uh, that's going to just fit in the top and then this sort of blocks down. You kind of give it a little snap. And uh, that snaps down on top. And you'll see that there's a there's another little space that's made another little space that's made here. This space is perfectly filled uh, with this. 
right here and it makes a nice little hole right here that perfectly matches where this game board goes uh all the levels are even now as it's a nice even surface and uh you can incorporate i'm gonna put i'm going to incorporate all of this paper stuff uh like we've got the we've got all the different scenarios we've got this little uh this little thing that explains like the game found content, you know, all this kind of fluffy stuff. I'm going to stick in here and it's actually going to protect the, the game board and the other components from this next layer, which, which is going to be the, um, the miniatures and stuff. So these miniatures are rubbing around on the edges. There is probably not going to be too big a deal. It's nice and smooth on the bottom here, so this isn't going to scratch up the board too bad. But I do like to put something between it because this this part of the plastic, if for some reason it kind of moves back and forth, back and forth, it could like potentially scratch something. So I, I usually like to put a little paper between it and whatever the next layer is. The only thing that doesn't snap down in these trays is these lanterns and stuff, and they can pop out and make this lid not not fit just right so be aware of that when you're putting this in so now it's pretty much flush we got the rule book i'm gonna leave the rule book on top so i can pull this out read it and be ready to know how to play this game and then of course we have the lid which fits down nice and snug let's pull this up you see we got uh, very little lid lift, just a little bit, maybe just a tiny bit, really not much. The components seem like they're pretty well packed in here. There was a bit of room, but that, 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 uh, dice tower can shift back and forth in there and it's not going to be a problem. I had pulled out these extra components to maybe put uh, the discovery tokens in here or something like that. I've got plenty of room if I wanted to divide those tokens up a little bit more uh, or something like that. And I might do that in the future. I'm gonna wait and see. Since those tokens are kind of shuffled down face down, it probably isn't real practical to put them in something like this. It's just as easy to dump them out of a bag. And folks, that's all I got for you today. Thank you for sticking around while I pulled uh, Robinson Crusoe out of the box. And then put everything back. Painting this was a lot of fun. Uh, I like the way that they've incorporated the trays and stuff. And the organ they've obviously thought about how to organize it and stuff. I, a lot of forethought went into uh, the interior of this box. This is a beloved game for, for many folks. And uh, maybe not this version of it or the production of it. It might not be so beloved. But this game has is is stood the test of time for a lot of folks. And I can't wait to take my first forays into into it uh, look forward to content for that soon if you like unboxings and reboxings and things like that i do it every occasionally i don't do it all the time but i do a few of those and you can see them here and of course subscribe i'd love to see you again and until next time enjoy your games i'll see you soon bye bye